Hey guys, this is Dylan Gossett, and you're listening to the Texas Toast Podcast. Cheers, everyone. Welcome to the Texas Toast Podcast with Miss Helen, and I'm super excited to welcome our guest for this episode, Dylan Gossett. I'm excited to get the word out for those of you that haven't become familiar with Dylan. Now is the time we're going to get to know him in many, many different ways, but you you are doing so much with your music, but let's talk about your background. You grew up in the Austin area. Yeah, so yeah, born and raised kind of North Austin, um, and yeah, it's just always kind of been home. It, I, I feel like Texans have a have a strong uh, love for their state. And I, you know, I've been other places, but it, it's very much home for me. Um, the only real move that I did out of Texas, I'm not sorry, not out of Texas, but out of Austin, um, was when I went to Texas A&M for college um, and then came back four years later. So, yeah, absolutely love it. So when you went to Texas A&M, what did you go there to study? So I went there to study sport management and business. Uh, and I still am. I'm a huge, huge sports guy. Um, and yeah, that, that's what, that was kind of the, the goal at the time, like what I wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, I, I had a great time and I used that degree, I guess for about two years. So now, now we're singing, <laughs> singing songs. So, and so how did you use that degree? Yeah. So I went, I, I worked at circuit of the Americas, which is the F1 racetrack here in Austin. I, uh, I had absolutely nothing lined up out of college. Um, I didn't want to move back in with the parents uh, and like pay them rent or whatever it would have been. So I was just emailing every single person in the state, just like I will work for free Dallas Cowboys or Houston Texans, like anybody. And I think it was actually like the second or third time that circuit of the Americas declined me. They're like, we'll tell you what, stop bugging us. Come be an unpaid intern. Um, so I had no money. I lived there like in my, in my parents RV at the track, for like three months. Um, right. and, and it was an awesome job. I, uh, I love the, the connections that I made there and the, and the friends I made. Uh, we still hang out to the day. So, um, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty crazy two years working there. And, you know, and again, the racing community is such a close community. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So you are self-taught guitar hmm. and let's talk about your transition into music. Yeah. I mean, so I've, I've self-taught guitar. I got my first guitar, I think when I was in fifth or sixth grade, um, and, and just always loved playing it. Um, I loved Ed Sheeran, John Mayer, uh, and then I kind of got into country and stuff when I was a little bit older, like maybe like high school and college, um, and people like Turnpike Troubadours and Shane Smith and the Saints and these, these Texas country guys, like Flatland Calvary, just these, these people that just made really cool red dirt, Texas kind of sounding music, but had a great storytelling element to it. Um, that was just what I fell in love with. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've been writing my songs like songs forever. Uh, not all of them are very good. Like when I first started, it was pretty bad. But um, I feel like I really found a groove after hearing guys like that and um, kind of made it my own in a way. And yeah, I mean, it was just, I never really saw this happening. Uh, it was never something I was chasing, really. Um, my wife one day was like, look, you have a lot of good songs. Like you've written so many, just post something online. Um and, you know, I, I was never, I never wanted to be a TikToker. I was like, I didn't really understand the app. I was just never like that. Um, but I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's post a video. Um, and about a month later, things just started really going crazy. I'm so glad you brought that up because that was my question. Like, I know how you blew up with your music on social media and you used that as your avenue to get your music out. Like, what were you posting on social media prior to that? Just like us normal, like normal people stuff. Yeah. I mean, I would post like a, a picture of like me and my wife or me and some buddies on Instagram, like once every six months. Right. Like I was just absolutely not posting. Um, and then, yeah, I went to TikTok and I posted that first video of just like a cover. Um, and I was getting this like a couple hundred views and I was like, cool, this is, you know, people are hearing me for the first time. I've never had like an audience or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I guess the posting started like really kind of happening. Um, I, I still don't even really get it or like how how the algorithm or whatever works but uh yeah we just I just like posting stuff that I that I enjoy putting out well it absolutely has worked for you you have you do have a six song EP out entitled no better time and that was released just recently oh. and um speaking of of your online to be free was kind of a debut that you gave to audiences but when Cole hit that mm -hmm. was that song is absolutely phenomenal 
I mean, Thank millions you. and millions. I mean, are you losing count on all, <laughs> all the yeah, numbers, I, all the numbers and all the charting on that particular single? Yeah, I, I, I could not have imagined it going the way that it did. I mean, it was such a special song to me. I wrote it about two years ago. Uh, and the only people who heard it until it kind of came out, like on, on social media was just my family uh, and a couple of friends. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, it has been a whirlwind seeing what that song has done, how it's affected people and like kind of the numbers on it. It's just, I ne never would have thought I, I, I was just actually in Canada last week and it, and it went gold in Canada. And it was funny. They, they brought it to me on stage and I was just like, my face was insane. Um, Stop it. Oh it was my like, gosh. It was like the very first gold plaque I ever had. Funny enough, we ship it back. The entire thing shattered. So like, I got to get like a new one or whatever, new frame for it. But <laughs> um, no, it, it's, it's been, yeah, it's been surreal. It's been very, very surreal. Oh, congrats on that. Well, let's talk about the title cut, um, No Better Time. And how that came to fruition and becoming the title cut and the name of that particular EP. Yeah. So that song was written. I, I was just sitting, I was honestly, I think I was almost trying to record a video. I was like covering like a Chris Stapleton song or something like that. Um, and it's like, wasn't working. I couldn't get the cover. Right. I didn't like how it sounded. So I just kind of started playing my own thing and making my own song. I, I wrote it on my kitchen table, um, put some harmonica to it. Um, and I didn't really think too much of it, but I kind of came back to it and really finished like the kind of the last part of it, like about a month later. Um, and I love the sound of it. I love the harmonica on it and kind of like what it stood for. The whole song really kind of stands for like, there's no, like kind of the music in a general way of like, you, you just got to go for it. There's no better time to post a video or try to get your music out than right now. Um, and whenever, you know, that song was in, like I knew it was going to be on the EP, I just thought it was a perfect fit for even the EP is my very first EP that we recorded in my house and stuff. And I, yeah, I just felt, felt right. It's just no better time to put out an EP. So let's just name it that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a great one. And one of, one of my favorites on the EP is flip a coin. So, yeah. So that's, you would be in good company with my wife. I think that's one of her favorite ones. Um, that's a song that I wrote again, like that, that was probably a song I wrote like about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, but mainly just kind of like that first couple verses. Uh, and then I kind of finished it up whenever everything was happening. I was like, I love this song. I want to make something about it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love that song. I wanted to just, just be guitar vocal and, um, yeah, I, I love the way it turned out. Okay. Now we're going to blow everybody's mind. Let's talk about how you wrote it, you produced it and you mixed it. Tell yeah. them where. Yeah. So the entire <laughs> thing was actually the laptop that I'm talking on right now, this is where all my music lives. It was all produced, recorded, written, all from my bedroom. Um, the reason it was in the bedroom and not like in the living room and hadn't, there's more carpet in there. I thought that would make a difference. <laughs> I was like, if, if the curtains will soak it up and I was like, that's all I kind of knew. So yeah, the entire thing was just self-produced and written and played except for the fiddle, um, which Jackson LeBlanc, he's, he's an awesome, awesome dude. Good friend of mine. He played it and, and crushed it. But um, yeah, it was, I've always been recording um, garage band or whatever it is. My mom was a teacher. So after school, I would go to her school and oh. mess around and just make, make music. And uh, in high school, my buddies would like to, you know, rap. So I'd make them beats and they would come into the, like the home studio or whatever and record. And which was just like the closet at the time. Um, but yeah, the actual picture from the EP, that is literally me recording that that's where it all was recorded. Um with the headphones on and sitting in that the kitchen chair. So yeah, it, I, I love it. <laughs> I know I do too. I absolutely do too. So things have really picked up for you and changed as far as on the music side, you're the flagship artist and signed with big loud, Texas Mercury records. It's your first big deal. Yeah. I'm so excited about this whole project going on with them. And cause we've had John Randall on the podcast. Miranda goes way back to my radio days when she first started. So tell me what that experience has been like for you stepping from us talking about you recording and mixing this EP in your bedroom. And now here you are with them. Yeah. And so I, it was funny because when it, when we first started this whole process, like it was really just me and my manager, Sam, and I, I had a lawyer, Matt. Um, that was kind of like the main three people on the team. Um, and I was kind of telling everybody from the get go, like, hey, you know, my goal in this is not to become this overnight country, create, like make the best song, like not the best song, like break records and get the most streams we can. I was like, I'm not looking like I don't need to sign. Like 
we're not, I'm not looking for a quick ticket. Like this is just something I love to do and I want to make sure that the music stays itself. Um, but you know, after time and time went on, the opportunities presented itself in such a perfect way with such a great group of people. Um, and it was just a no brainer. Um, so I met with yeah, Mercury from Republic, uh, and those guys were amazing. And then, um, having just be, being able to partner up with big loud and being the flagship artist with big loud, Texas, uh, I, it felt like a dream. I, I really could not imagine a better way. And John Randall and Miranda are just the nicest, mm -hmm. coolest, best kind of mentor type people that I could have asked for um, in, in this. Because I mean, they're, they're people that have really done it. Like Miranda, hearing yes. her stories about when she was, you know, trying to come up as a, as a woman country artist and in Texas and getting gigs. It's uh, it's inspiring. It's it's really cool. So. And I, I can go back to those days because I remember when her and Mama Bev came around in the White Explorer to the radio <laughs> stations. And I mean, yeah. it's like I watched her grow and, and she's our Miranda. And it's just yeah. I, I was so excited when I saw the announcement of this. I was like, oh, yes, this yeah. is going to be exciting to watch. And then to have you on the podcast and and you're to, you're getting it started and to be a part of it. That is super exciting for our industry. Oh, I, yeah, it's it's super exciting. Whenever I found out, because I was kind of, before I even knew about Big Loud Texas, I was just talking to Big Loud. Uh, and then they were like, well, you know, we have this really cool opportunity that might be happening. Uh, Miranda's a huge fan. I was like, well, Miranda who? I haven't I haven't met Miranda. Like, well, Miranda Lambert. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, that doesn't make sense. That it, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I I, I, I couldn't be more uh, more happy with, with how it kind of turned out and where, where we're trying to take it. So, yeah. Okay, so let's 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 get outside of that a little bit and talk about some of the shows that you've played, some of the venues, and some of the artists that you've had the chance to share the stage with so far. Yeah, so funny enough, the very first show I've ever played for like in my life, where people were coming to watch and knew that I was on the ticket, um, was in Lubbock, Texas. So it was at the Blue Light. Um, excuse me, and I was opening for Wyatt Flores. And what's so funny? So Wyatt's an Oklahoma guy. Um, he's from Stillwater. And I would always watch his videos. He was one of the kind of the reasons why I even posted in the first place of like, you know, he has great music and he posts on this TikTok app um, and he's making like a real kind of career out of it. So like, let's kind of try to maybe do something like that. Uh, yeah. And he, him and his team hit us up to, to do something. And I was like, 1000% I'm in. And that first show was just, I, I mean, it was in front of this rowdy Lubbock crowd that was just like, you know, waiting for good music. And uh, I went up there. I was like, they're not, they're not going to care. They're going to be talking. It's fine. But when I played Cole for the first time ever in front of a crowd, I mean, they were screaming it, yelling it, recording it. It was, it was unreal. So I, 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 I was hooked. I was like, this is, this is, I made the right decision <laughs> it's to try to pursue this. And um, yeah, we did five shows with Wyatt. We did three shows with Brent Cobb. Um, we did, we're doing, Actually, we have a show with Colby Cooper next, tomorrow and then in College Station. Um, oh, I love Colby. Yeah. And then we're finishing oh. it with Grimes like in December. So a bunch of just so solid guys that that I, I've met and the, the nicest, most talented people in the world. So it's uh, it's been amazing. Yeah. Yes. Our, our Texas country family, as we like to call it, we are so close and it's just, everybody looks out for each other and I can see where you're just fitting right in. Yeah. So what are your goals for your show? Well, let's, let's talk about your set list. Like yeah. as you're progressing in your shows, what are your plans for your future shows and, and maybe some of your bucket list venues mm -hmm. you'd like to play? Yeah. So, I mean, right now as I'm, I'm kind of just, it's almost like you're like I'm dipping my feet in, right? Like I'm just doing these opening acts and trying to find my sound and just get on a stage and get comfortable with it. Um, so it's just, I'm kind of doing basically like a 30 minute set right now for a lot of these opening spots. And uh, I'm just kind of playing through the EP basically um, mm -hmm. changing things here and there, just, kind of just feeling it out and feeling the crowd and what they enjoy, how they respond. Um, but when we do like a full band next year and we're doing like, you know, headlining and doing the whole tour thing, I, I, I'm over the moon. I'm so excited. Like we're, I, my brother's actually going to be part of it. He, he plays lead and backup vocals and he's insane. He's a great musician. Um, but no, I mean, I, there's so many songs that I have right now that I can't wait to get out uh, and especially play live. I think the whole live band is going to change the songs immensely in such a good way. So it's, uh, we, we had, we had like a practice last night, like me and my brother and like this, this other guy, Joel, that we playing bass and um, it was just so much fun. Like the, what they're able to add to these songs. It's uh yeah, I'm excited for it. 
So that covers the shows. Now, going back again, one thing I forgot to ask you, um, we were talking about music and recording and, and your writing. What do you have up your sleeve for? Do you have your first recording or next album to come out? I'm sure you've been writing. I'm sure you have some songs yeah. in your library. Let's talk a little bit about that, what we can expect in the near future. Yeah, I mean, I I am in the lane of I want to get music out as soon as I possibly can. It's been it's been a crazy busy time like this past month. So I haven't really been able to sit down and record like I'm used to doing. Um, but I, I mean, starting kind of like in January, I'm ready to start putting out like some singles that I have and then hopefully straight into just like kind of a, a first album for me. Um, hopefully as early as I can next year. Um, I, everyone's kind of on board in the same way. We're not really looking to do it in a way that, you know, we have to wait on this exact day or like, this is the best time for the best streaming. It's like, no, like, you know, we, we know people want to hear the music and I want to get it out. So um, yeah, lo lots of music on the way in 2024 for sure. Your songwriting, the one thing I, this, were, this was just some of the notes that I made about you, like your poetic, your organic sound and your, your crystal vocals that comes from your soul. So yeah. your inspiration for the songwriting and the storytelling that you have with your lyrics, where, where did you pull that from? Where does that come from? Yeah. I mean, I think like, my very first influence songwriting wise, and the reason I have a Martin guitar and all that, I mean, that was, it was Ed Sheeran. Um, he just, I mean, he just changed the entire, my entire world of music, of uh, what I was listening to. And, um, just absolutely changed it for me. And then kind of came into John Mayer. Um, and I mean, I would say more recently, kind of like that inspiration was people like Shane Smith and the Saints. I think the way those songs sound. and I so just, hear that, yes. It's so awesome. I love Mumford and Sons, um, the Lumineers, Flatland Calvary, Chris Stapleton and how he writes a lot of his own uh, own, own songs. And um, that, And I think the soul comes from like, you know, I tell you what, this is kind of funny. I actually never even said this before. Michael Bolton, the way he sang, I I don't sound like Michael Bolton, obviously, but like that, like powerful kind of sound that he had. I I always just kind of liked, and my my family had always kind of like joked to me about it because I was like fifteen, listening to Michael Bolton or something like that. But um, <laughs> no, I I think um, I think there's been so many influences uh, on me that I, it's kind of even hard to name them but i would say that yeah that's songwriting it's that kind of texas country storytelling stuff is uh yes. what i love to do so yes and we i can so hear all of all of that in in your music so um moving forward we're looking forward to um seeing you in your music but and and what you'll have coming up but i i do want to like audience that we have like is hardcore texas country like like so on a personal side, what is something that you would like for our listeners to to know about you? Yeah, um, I'm just a very, I mean, I obviously love music, but first and foremost, I mean, I, I love the Texas A&M Aggies. I'm a huge Aggie. Okay, there um, you go. We're, Colby Cooper, the second date, so I think it's Thursday of this week, so two days, um, we're playing in College Station. That's my first time playing in College Station. I can't wait. Um yeah, love sports. I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, I, I I got a dog. He's a pit bull named Brooks. He's the best thing ever. I, I don't know. It's it's almost kind of weird uh, talking outside of music lately because that's just been so everything. And that's just every. It's almost of course interesting to think outward. But like, yeah, I mean, family is massive to me. Uh, my faith. It's just uh, yeah. It's 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 been a crazy few months. That, like. It's kind of music based right now, but yeah. Well, you got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of success, and I'm sure more success to come. So, one last question I have for you before we wrap this up, which I could go on and on. You're just so much fun. And <laughs> I knew I knew the sports because I'm a sports person too, and yeah. I was like, I knew this. I knew you were going to be like my kind of in in my wheelhouse stuff. But <laughs> if you were a if you were a cocktail, what would you be? Oh, that is a great one. What would I be? Oh man, I can't. I think old fashioned is too, too sophisticated. Cause I'm not very sophisticated. Maybe like a um. Oh, give me one second, cause I can't. I cause take that's your a, time. A great question. Um. Oh, maybe like a whiskey coke. It uh, okay. I think a whiskey coke. It's simple. It tastes great. 
Um, it, it's kind of, it's, it can be a, a, ch a chill drink, but it can also kind of be rowdy at times. I think it's perfect. I, I, yeah, I think whiskey coat is, uh, is perfect. So cool. Cool. I yeah. like that. Well, um, and for people that want to start looking up, where can they find you? Dylan Gossett, spell your name, where everybody can find you. Yeah. So on all socials, it's Dylan Gossett. It's D-Y-L-A-N-G-O-S-S-E-T-T. -T. Um, yeah, that's the best kind of way. I think it's just all at Dylan Gossett. Um, we have a website coming up very, very soon. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. It's Dylan Gossett. So. Okay. All right. Well, so glad we got to visit. Love what you're doing. Love your stuff. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Dylan. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Helen. It's, uh, it's been a blast. So I had a lot of fun.